are at Dina Wakely Media. I'm excited to show you what I have new. I have a happy clap thing <laughs> uh, that I'm excited to show you this year. So this is my new book. Um, this came out in November, so that it could hit the Christmas time market. North Light Publishing publishes my books. Um, that's my second book. And Ranger will carry that book. So if you're a store and you think, oh, where do I get it? I get that question all the time. Um, Ranger will carry that so you can get it. Ranger, so I'm super excited about that. I have new stamps and stencils, of course, because that's scrapbook and craft crack. <laughs> you have a little bit, you feel good for a while, and then you need more, right? So we'll never, never stop with those. So we have new stamps and stencils. We, I did another little scribbly bird set because the birds are so popular. Um, this is based on my fun foam stamp technique, which I teach in class all the time. And there's some that I just would make over and over and over, and they don't last that long. And so I wanted them in rubber. Um, more women because I can't get enough of them. This one I did for card makers, but it's also good for all kinds of craft applications. I've been using it on my journal pages too. I started scrapbooking in 1995. Uh, I got a package of Sherbet Brights cardstock. Remember that? Sherbet Brights. Sherbet Brights. No. Oh my gosh. Yes, and one zinc pen is what I got for Christmas. <laughs> I'm in a blue binder. And that started this all, this whole thing rolling. And then I discovered stamping in about 97. And so I've been making cards for a long, long time. And I just wanted to have a little card making set because the, the you can do a background, stamp that heart on it. You can even put it on powdered paper if you wanted. And then the phrases go right inside the heart. So how simple and easy, right? And then I wanted to do some flowers. There's lots of people that love to color. Coloring is a very zen thing, right? It puts you in your happy place. So some flowers as well. I, those are for my mother-in-law cards. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my mother-in-law's birthday. I'm gonna uh -huh. use those for her birthday cards, okay? Nice. So my acrylic paint, we have a couple new colors. Um, my paint was announced last show, but it didn't really hit your store till when? May, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> so it took a little while for us to get it out the door because I needed it perfect and I'm a little picky. Um, and so it is fantastic paint. So for this show, we did metallics because metallics are everywhere. They're hot, they're in every booth, right? So we have um, sterling, gilt, Diane said I should have called it G-U-I-L-T. <laughs> that would have been awesome, wouldn't it? Um, and then I have Penny, which is the, the copper. And then we added a black. I didn't do a black last time because I don't use a lot of black paint. I use a little. I mostly use this color, which is night, which is my very dark navy. Okay, so, but we added black because people were just like, why don't you have black? And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> You're right. We need to add that. So we added black as well. And again, my paint is heavy body. I like heavy body, right? It, it will hold its peak. So if you look at the paint on this little plate, see the little, that looks like a little Hershey's Kiss right there, doesn't it? That's how it came out of the tube, and it will dry like that. It will hold its peak, it will hold its texture, it will hold its brush stroke. That is what my paint does. That's why it's heavy body. Because of that, it doesn't have a lot of water in it, and it dries out something fierce. So that's why it's in a tube, so it doesn't dry out quite as bad. Now, if, if it frustrates you and you need your paint to be open longer, that's, you know, chemical talk for wet longer, um, we've developed a glazing medium this show. This is my little prototype glazing medium. And so the glazing medium, you mix it with the paint, it will make it, it, will make it more transparent and it will make it stay open longer. So if you're a jelly printer, if you uh, are doing anything where you just don't want it to dry in three minutes, um, you can add a little bit of glazing medium. Now, why not add a little water? Because it'll break apart the acrylic it, resins it in there? It will sometimes break the paint. So have you ever added so much paint or water to paint that it looks like watery? It looks like, it looks like, it looks like your paint water instead of loose, pretty watercolor. Like it, it, it dilutes the pigment, right? Whereas this will help that not to happen. It really won't break the paint, you know? I find I can add a small amount of water to my paint. Not a problem at all. Um, but if you really want it thin, thin, if you want to do a real thin glaze, then it just looks like watery something icky, right? So this will help that if you really do need it to be thin, okay? A little water A-OK, -okay, a lot turn to the glazing medium. That makes sense? So the happy clap thing, darlings, is the fine line tip, okay? So when you're a mixed media person like we are, we're in the cult, <laughs> right? Um, we don't just paint on our work, what do, we, what do we put on it? The answer is yes. So the whole store, the whole store throws up on what we do. We have tissue with gel medium. We have crayon. I'm obsessed with crayons. I 
I'm back into kindergarten and I love crayons. <laughs> um, you might put oil pastel or, you know what I mean? You, you, something new and you, you found something at the hardware store and you're, you're putting it on there, right? And then what do you use to write on all that stuff? Nothing. Nothing writes on oil. The Fude Ball is fantastic and this pen will write on dried acrylic paint. It, it writes on paint like, uh, like this is awesome. Ooh, hello, that's wet. <laughs> you know, I can write, hello. Right? So this writes wonderfully on dried paint, but if you've got anything that's not, you know, anything in addition to paint on there that's lumpy bumpy, uh, doesn't write on glue very good, uh, then you're, 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 you're stuck sometimes. So what this does, this fine line tip, is it turns any tube of my paint into a pen. Okay? So the, you get two in a blister, there are, they're both the same size. People yesterday were saying on their videos, oh, there are two different sizes of nibs. No, they're not. They're, you get two of the same, because frankly, you're gonna need six packs of these. <laughs> because you're gonna need one on every color. Um, two of the same tip. Um, because my paint has a heavy body, uh, what we did was we made that tip pretty wide, okay? Because we don't want you to have um, carpal tunnel syndrome <laughs> trying to squeeze the paint. We also made it quite short, so there's less real estate from the needle to push the needle through. Okay, so it shouldn't be too bad to squeeze through. Okay, um, when you put the lid back on, what you have to do is there's. A, let me hold my finger still for you. Uh, you have to thread the needle that's in the lid into the needle that's on the bottle, and then it really won't clog. We live in Arizona. No one and I live in Arizona. What, everything dries out there. Your baby wipes dry out. You have to add water to your wipes all the time. Um, and this just makes it so it won't dry out on you won't clog for you. You can put one of these tips on gel medium, and then if you were a die cutter and you have all those little dies, wafer dies, and you're, you're cutting the really thin, intricate things with Tim's, you know that little lattice, the die of Tim's, and I'm, I'm in love with, I love that thing. Um, you can put a little drops of glue on it with the, with the fine line tip, yeah? Hmm. Okay, so then you shake your paint down into the needle, make sure it's down in, and then you squeeze, and it becomes a pen. And you can make it, Bumpy. See how it has a little Hershey's Kiss uh, peak? Yeah. And if you don't want it to be peaky, if you tap the bottom, the lady in the last group told us this, it turns into a dome. Okay, it Ooh. loses its little tip. Uh, that makes sense? And then yeah. you've got like a little, uh, kind of like the little uh, acrylic enamel dots. dots. Enamel dots, yes. Those are fun. Yeah. Um, so this just makes it easy to draw, doodle. You're like, oh, I wish, I wish I had flowers on top of that tissue paper that I gel mediumed on there. <laughs> now you can! Isn't that awesome? Yeah. So they're super fun. Um, we were talking about what you do when the tube of paint runs out. Don't throw it away. Uh, cut the top of the tube off. There's enough paint on there for at least five more backgrounds. There's tons of paint. Um, you, you cut it apart. I had one here cut it over where it went. And then you stick your brush in there. I, I just use it right then. I cut it out. I'm like, oh, got a lot of turquoise. I made five turquoise backgrounds. Take this off, move to the new tube, okay? Because um, this will be fine. Just get the get the excess paint. You should do that with your moisturizer as well. <laughs> Don't tell Bobby Brown that. She might not want you to know. No, uh, you can use every little bit of that of that, of that out there. I really want to demystify paint. I feel like sometimes people come to acrylic and they think, oh, I have to paint the Mona Lisa, and, and paint is for artists, and I'm not an artist, I'm a poser. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm doing, I'm just playing and having fun. And paint is versatile. It is one of the most versatile things that you can use and buy, because the answer for what you can do for, with, with it is yes. Can you make a background? Yes. Can you paint it on your photograph and alter your picture? Yes. Can you, you know, spill it on your carpet? Oh, yes. <laughs> um, simple, simple things. I also have been loving using it right on my stamps. So here's one of my new stamps from this set. I, think, I called it wood cuts because I think they look a little bit like a wood cut. And then go ahead and apply that acrylic. You can apply it with a brush. I feel like it's easier with the, the, the blending tool. But go ahead and glob it on there. Make it thick and delicious. You can get more incarnations. And somewhere on this table I've got a green one of those. This is I Spy. Oh, found it. to add one spray of water. And the more water that you add, the more it will look like you have watercolor. 
piece. There's a card sign on the wall. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Done. Right? Make sure you always wash the paint off out of your, out of your stamp. Um, I, I don't wash much, but one thing that I do wash is my stamps if they have acrylic paint in them because it'll get into those grooves and then dry, and then you've got to get it out with a pen. Right? It's just such a hassle. So go ahead and wash it out as well. I had a couple questions yesterday about what you use uh, gel medium and gesso for.